Okay, today we're going to be talking about muscle contractions. So, um, first off, the nerve impulses will start to travel down to the motor neuron, which then will connect to the muscle, and that will um, go with the neuromuscular junction, which then the axon potential travels down to the axon terminal, which is right here, so it'll travel down where my arrows are. And then the voltage-gated uh, channels will open, causing the calcium ions to enter the synapatic end bulbs. So it'll come in through right here, the gate, and it'll come in here in the bulbs, down in the end bulb, and go in the vesicles. Um, the calcium ions then will cause fusions of the vesicles and cause exocytosis releasing acetylcholine into the synapase. The acetylcholine will then bind to the receptors in the motor end plate, which this will cause the ligand-gated channels to open up, allowing the sodium ions, which are right here, to come out. And they will come down in here. While on the other hand, the sodium ions will release so the calcium ions will go in and then the sodium ions will release, which this will cause the membrane to become more positive and less negative, which is causing depolarization, which the depolarization allows the ligand-gated channels to open, which this is also allowing the action potential to move down to the sacramella. Action potential will now move down the T-tubules which causes the protein connector right here to change shape, which allows for the calcium to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and it will go into the sarcoplasm through vulgated channels. So the calcium that was released into the sarcoplasm will now bind with the troponin, which is right here, and the troponin will then change shape, exposing binding sites for myosin, when the troponin changes shape, it causes the tropomyosin, which is right here, the blue, to move upwards, allowing for actin to bind to the myosin head, starting the power stroke process. Myosin head will then bind to the ATP, causing the hydrolysis process, which turns the ATP into ADP. So that's what we're showing right here is the ATP, which is then binded and turns in through hydrolysis into the ADP. This will continue as the muscle contracts, so the crossbridge cycling causes the sacromere to shorten, actually. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to stop muscle contractions. So first, you need to stop the action potential on a neuron, which will stop the release of the acetylcholine in the synapase, allowing synapase to remove the acetylcholine, which there are two main ways of removing acetylcholine. It is removed by diffusion, or it is hydrolyzed or broken down. Next, the sodium is removed from the muscle fiber. So now we had the sodium, so you're going to remove it from all your muscle fibers. And then you're actually going to take the calcium and put it back into the sacro sarcoplasmic reticulum. So you're going to take it out of the sarcoplasm and put it back in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So then we're going to go back to this picture and the troponin and tropomyosin are then released from the um, um, calcium causing the troponin to return to its normal shape which that allows for the uh, myosin to go back to covering the actin and the myofilaments will slide back to their original spots, causing the muscle to relax again. The disorder that I chose was botulism, and I got my information from medicinenet.com and medicalnewstoday.com. So botulism is caused by botulinum toxin, which causes paralysis, which starts in the face and then spreads to your other limbs. The neurotoxin paralyzes the nerves so that the muscles cannot contract anymore. 
And then the main symptoms of it are vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal swelling, weakness in the neck and arms, and respiratory muscles can be affected as well.